Good afternoon, my name is Shane Kurtanis and I'm coming to you from the Pace University Entrepreneurship Lab. Today, I would like to go through the steps in order to obtain 3D printed models from our 3D printer here at the Pace Entrepreneurship Lab. Step one in the 3D printing process is obtaining an STL file. STL files are what the 3D printers use to read the images from the computer that you're processing into the printer. The first step is opening the Safari or browser and going to a website that offers free STL files. A recommendation is the website Thingiverse, which has a whole catalog of popular 3D printed models that are easily ready to download and print. If you go up to the Explore tab, you will be able to find tons of already made 3D models and you can also search for specific items that you're looking for. Once you find a model that you would like, you can click on it and hit the download all files icon in the mid to right section of the computer screen. As you can see in the bottom left corner, the STL file will appear downloaded. The best way to obtain your STL file is to save it into a USB flash drive. Hmm. Once your downloaded STL file from the internet is saved into your USB drive, you are then able to transport that file into the Cube Pro software. Step two in the 3D printing process is understanding what Cube Pro is. Cube Pro is the name of the 3D printer that we have in the entrepreneurship. It is also the name of the software used to obtain the 3D models you're getting from online. Once you obtain the STL file on a flash drive, you are able to drag the STL file into the Cube Pro software, enabling the printer to read it. The Cube Pro icon is right here, and you can start by opening up that software. What you will find is the tray that is actually in the 3D printer where you will set your model and prepare it for slicing. Step three in the 3D printing process is called slicing. Slicing is the term used to determine which route the printer will take in order to bring you your tangible 3D printed object. So the final step in this is going to the build icon in the top center of your computer screen and selecting it. And it will bring you up this build settings tab. Now, Regularly, we want to use 200 layer resolution on a strong to almost solid layer strength and a print pattern of either cross or diamond pattern. Once you have selected and finalized your build settings, you can hit the build icon in the bottom of the file. You then want to save your STL and Cube rope profiles back onto the USB drive as seen here. Now the build progress is slicing the object and finalizing it for the 3D printer. Step 4 in the 3D printing process is the USB drives. USB drives are important when 3D printing because they are the transportation from getting a file from the computer to the 3D printer. Once your STL files are sliced, you may drag them into your USB drive and save them. Then you can take the USB drive and plug it directly into the port of the 3D printer and the printer will be able to read that sliced file. Once you have finished the slicing process from the computer, it is time to take your USB drive which contains the STL files and input them into the 3D printer. 
The final step in the 3D printing process is rendering. Once you have obtained your sliced STL file on the USB drive and have directly put it into the port of the 3D printer, an icon will come up to direct you to render the file. Once you select yes, the file will be read by the printer and the heating process will begin. Once the 3D printer is turned on and the USB drive is inserted into the port of the 3D printer, you will see this eLab Cube is ready home screen. Now it gives you two options and since we are completely finished setting up and have our STL files saved, we're going to start by hitting the print button. Up top in this section, you will be able to choose between which STL file you want to print depending on how many you have saved on the USB drive. In our case, we will be printing the Freedom Tower building and you begin by, for the second time, hitting print. Once the 3D printer verifies the file, it will then ask you to apply glue or some adhesive to the surface of the plate. We choose to use blue painter's tape because it is easier to remove after the print is finished and it will allow us to use the plate for a longer duration of time opposed to super glues. Once the plate begins to level itself out, you will see an icon that tells you that it is in the process of heating up. This print in particular will take 2 hours and 27 minutes as seen on the bottom here of this frame. Now from this point forward when the 3D printer begins to heat, you no longer are needed to press anything else and the printer will do the rest of the work. Thank you for watching our video and we hope it was helpful. If you have any other questions or are interested in any opportunities the Entrepreneurship Lab has to offer, feel free to visit the website at www.elab.nyc or feel free to come to the third floor of 163 William Street on Pace University's campus in downtown Manhattan. We thank you for your time.